What you are looking at are images of aurora borealis taken a mere hour ago in New York, Massachusetts, and Arkansas. If you were to simply go outside in 49 of the 50 U.S. states right now, sadly not Hawaii, you are likely to see spectacular and strong aurora. This aurora is expected to peak moments from now and remain at high levels between 1 and 6 a.m. UTC time on October 11, 2024, translating to 6 to 11 p.m. tonight in California, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. on the U.S. East Coast, 3 to 9 a.m. in Germany, 12 to 6 p.m. in Melbourne, and 2 to 9 p.m. in Wellington. This aurora will be seen in both the northern and southern hemispheres across a whopping 22.7% of the planet. I will now take a moment to highlight where in the world aurora is most likely to be observed tonight as marked by the areas between the two bright green polygons, while between the dark and light green polygons represents where auroras have a lesser chance of being observed, but still could technically be seen tonight. Of course, these rough charts assume an observation time at the peak of the aurora's intensity and that this peak occurs during night rather than daylight hours. Auroras, for context, are created when highly charged particles released by the sun slam into Earth's magnetic field, which then flow down towards the magnetic poles. Once these particles reach the upper atmosphere, specifically in the thermosphere, they interact with various gas particles present where they shed some of their energy, causing the atoms to react and release a photon producing light. Different gases and altitudes in the atmosphere produce different colors during this reaction, with oxygen often creating the color green at 100 to 300 km altitude, red or pink being generated by oxygen at 300 to 400 km altitude, or nitrogen at around 100 km altitude, and purple and blue being generated by helium and hydrogen molecules. Auroras occur constantly due to our star's solar wind, but sometimes unusually energetic outbursts of material occur in what is known as a coronal mass ejection. The size and intensity of the ejection determines the strength of the resulting solar storm on Earth. In the case of a latest event, at 1.56 a.m. UTC time on October 9th, an X 1.8 solar flare occurred, releasing a coronal mass ejection from the sun's surface which then headed towards Earth, which was created by a grouping of sunspots more than five times the diameter of Earth, or at least 39,600 miles wide. As a whole, coronal mass ejections occur at a variable rate in an 11 year long cycle which correlates with the flipping of the sun's magnetic poles, varying from 1 a week to 3 a day. Currently, we are in the expected maximum level of activity in the entire 11 year long cycle as you can see via this chart. About 5% of observed CMEs the sun creates strike Earth, translating to a rate of at least 10 a year. Most of these create small solar storms with limited effects being rated as a G1 or G2 on a G1 to G5 scale, which is similar to the current hurricane category scale. The current solar storm, based on preliminary data, has a rating of either a very high NG4 or possibly very low NG5, marking it as the second or third strongest solar storm to strike Earth in the last 20 years. In other words, what we are experiencing is a rare event, so you definitely should head outside immediately. Storms of this designation are classified as severe, often causing various problems to certain types of electronics. In a G4 storm, insufficiently protected satellites can be knocked out or even knocked into a lower orbit, certain radio communications can be disrupted, and scattered power outages can occur. While the current solar storm is indeed quite strong, it is not a huge cause for concern. However, it might be best to not work on any electrical systems until the solar storm has passed. I hope that everyone can enjoy the spectacular aurora tonight. Hopefully you did not mind this non-geology science video.